So what is the best part of working at Google? Well, contrary to the popular belief, for me, it's not the gyms, the free food, the ping pong tables, the super good health insurance, the free boat rides to and from work, the helicopter rides on the weekends, the boat parties on the weekdays, and so on and so on. And you know, at some point that list is fake, but to be honest, it's kind of hard to tell with the tech industry. I'll let you guys figure out which ones are real or not. So what is the best part? Okay, so for me, the best part of working at Google, which I realized after I left, was being surrounded by people who are very good role models. Another way to say this, and I use this term loosely, is being surrounded by people who are smarter than you, right? And, you know, smart is a word that I use very loosely. So one thing I want to emphasize is that in life and in companies like this or any company, we don't always learn by someone directly mentoring us or like watching a video, right? We learn by osmosis. We learn by example. And at Google, for me, what I realized after I left and as I looked at the experiences of my students, you know, graduating boot camps, getting their first jobs, is that it's really important to be surrounded by people who are better than you in some respect, right? And in that way, you improve simply by watching them. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about three qualities or three categories in which I felt that I learned a lot from people at Google. And again, I want to emphasize one more time, these are not things that anybody ever sat down and tutored to me during my time there, but things that I simply learned by observing. So the first category is code quality. And I talk about this in some of my other videos, but at Google, uh, you know, they're pretty well known for having a culture of enforcing high code quality. And what I've talked about before is that, on the contrary, when I look at the experiences of my students, you might know about caring about good code quality. But when you're at a company where no one else cares, where no one else even wants you to review their code, it's really hard. There's like a pressure, essentially, to stop caring, to give in, right? And on the flip side, what I realized is that while I was at Google, you don't even think about this because it's the norm. You know, you take it for granted. You accept that nobody is going to submit shit code, right? Because if they do, it's not going to get reviewed. And essentially, without even thinking about it, without even making a conscious effort or like even thinking of the possibility that you might not write clean code, you're writing clean code every day. You know, every piece of code you write, you're giving your best effort because you know that's what it takes to get through a review, right? So when I contrast these two scenarios and I look at the experiences of my students, I realized how important and valuable it is to be in that type of culture where you're surrounded by people who care about code quality. And for me, that's one of the most valuable things that I took away from my time at Google. So the second category in which I think I really learned, you know, simply by being around these people is about being a manager, right? And I'm not going to claim that I'm the best manager in the world, but I will say that I had, in my opinion, really good managers at Google, managers who cared about me having a fulfilling time in my work and who looked out for my best interest, right? Among the other things that managers do. And so when it came time for me to be a manager, for example, when I took on an intern at Google, you know, shout out to Robert, if you're out there, I'm um, thinking about you right now. Uh, and, you know, later on when I became a teacher, which in, to me in many ways is similar to being a manager, except, you know, your employees are your students. And later when I hired students for my own startup, I felt actually that I was ready already to be a manager simply from the things that I had learned from having good managers. So again, not all managers at Google are good. You know, you'll hear horror stories. But again, in my experience, I always had a great time, right? Like I always had a great time working with my managers and kind of like, you know, how parents imprint behavior on their children. It's actually very similar to me in this case. I feel that my managers imprinted many things on me you know, without me even realizing it, that I later reflected in my behavior when it came time. And again, I never took any courses for managing or anything like that. It's simply, again, being surrounded by good role models. So the third category is concrete technical knowledge, right? And what do I mean by this? I'll give a few examples. So, you know, I worked on a team uh, during my last team at Google that did security and machine learning research. And when I joined that team, I was the only person without a PhD in machine learning. And, and the reason I bring that up is not to say like, oh, look, I could keep up with them. Because what I'm saying is actually the opposite, that in the beginning, 
I would feel I couldn't keep up with them. And, you know, maybe even at the end, because these people were all much more knowledgeable than me in that respect. And to me, that's a good thing, right? I learned so much simply by seeing the way these people approach problems, right? So we were doing research. And for example, if we're tackling some broad abstract problem, maybe the way that my teammates approached it, you know, maybe the way that they broke down the problem or the specific concrete techniques that they proposed. In this way, I feel that I gained a lot of concrete technical knowledge simply by working with them for two years, you know, by being present in these meetings and involved in these projects. You know, another example might be when I look back to my time on the payments team, let's say there's a production outage or something, right? And, you know, I would ask yourself, you know, what's the first thing you do when something goes wrong with a website that you're working on or a product that you're working on, right? And so, you know, basically there's a certain s steps people take or certain ways people think. And I'm thinking right now about like these super senior engineers, you know, at Google, we call them like uh, level eight, level nine engineers who are managing not just one team, but multiple teams at once, right? And I'm thinking about the things that they did when there was a production outage. Like maybe they would be like, okay, don't ask questions. Don't figure out why. Just get us back to the oldest working version, something like this, right? Again, this is just one small example, but it's the type of thing, you know, no one teaches at you directly, but when the time comes, when I'm working on my own product and something goes wrong, it's the type of behavior that I reflect because I've seen it before from good role models right? So why did I make this video? I didn't make this video just to talk about it. I didn't make this video because Google is paying me like $2 billion to make this video. I made this video because it does, for me, connect very strongly to the experiences of my students. Even if they're not trying to work at Google immediately, it's really important because one of the things that I tell my students when they're looking for a job, one of the most important things is to find a job where there's at least one person who knows more than you, that you can learn from, right? There's many ways to phrase this. And what I tell people to avoid, you know, on the flip side, and this is something I've seen happen to a lot of students, is I tell them to avoid jobs where they are the only front-end developer, for example. You know, you have no other front-end developer to work on. I tell them to avoid freelancing as a first job because it's the same thing. You have nobody to learn from. You have no role models, right? Uh, I tell them to avoid companies where they are the only developer, right? Like, let's say there's some non-technical people and they are the only developer. You know, you can still learn a lot by doing, but the truth is it's less effective than working with someone who's, you know, more senior or more knowledgeable or, you know, who has done things and learned things that you haven't, right? And again, this person doesn't always have to mentor you directly, but it's, it's very useful to simply be around this person, to work closely with this person and see how they think. You know, they don't have to be the most perfect person in the world. And again, it might seem that the things I've talked about in Google are distant from, you know, say the companies you're working at. But to me, they're not because contrary to what the Internet wants you to believe, there's tons of really, really smart people, experienced people who don't work at Facebook, Apple, Google, Netflix and so on. Right. And so it doesn't matter what stage of your career you're in. To me, it doesn't matter what company you're in. The principle still applies is that if you're looking for a job in any stage of your career, you should look for something where you can be surrounded by good role models. So with that being said, you know, and tying it back to just examples of the things I've learned from Google, and that's not even, I would say, the most exhaustive list. For me, the best thing about working at Google was being surrounded by role models. And essentially being surrounded, again, I use this word loosely, by people who were smarter than me. Because in that way, I could be humbled and I could learn something from other people rather than showing up and, you know, just doing work and, you know, already knowing everything. To me, that's not fun either. So, you know, in my opinion, that's the best part of working at Google. Although, to be honest, last week I had lunch with my manager at a Google office. It was my first time in a Google office since I left. and. Uh, I might have actually believed that the best part is the free food. But that being said, uh, leave your comments below. You know, I'd be interested to hear you know, if you've experienced these things at your company and enjoyed it, or perhaps even more interesting, if you've, been experienced, if you've experienced a lack of these things at your company, and it's something that you wish your company had more of. With that, uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.